Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Becky. If you haven't been here before, welcome. I'm an illustrator, graphic designer, artist, and a plant lover. So today we're going to be talking everything Hoyas. I think one of the reasons why everyone loves Hoyas is because there are so many different types. And there are so many different varieties, different colors, their leaves are different, they have different needs, there's probably a Hoya for everyone. And I love them all. <laughs> this, so this is my Hoya collection. Where do I start? Which one was my first Hoya? Okay, let's start with my first Hoya. This is Hoya Bella. This was my first Hoya. And re recently I gave it a bit of a cut. So it was longer than this, but what I did is I cut the ends off and I've propagated those ends up so I can fill this pot in more and it could be a bigger plant. So I was given this Hoya for free from a lady that I met through Trade Me, showed me her Hoya and I thought they were really cool. So she gave me a cutting of this Bella. I just love my Bella. Now, Hoya Bella needs a little bit more water than uh, most Hoyas. It's kind of tricky to tell when she needs water, but I sort of squeeze her leaves. At the moment, they feel like full of water, so she's fine. I think the next Hoya I got was this Hoya Obovada, and I was given a tiny cutting. It was, it was in the middle of winter as well, and it was a half a leaf and a bit of a stem and that was it. I didn't know anything about propagating Hoya. It had no roots and I had to propagate this Hoya ovovata. And Hoya ovovata is a rare, rarer Hoya in New Zealand. So I was really like, ah, um, what am I going to do? So I bought a heat mat. It's called a seed mat or a heat mat and people use them to start growing seeds, seedlings, that sort of thing on them. But it really helped to grow this plant. And it grew, grew roots over the winter and then in the spring it just started growing. One of the only Hoyas that I bought from a store. This is my Crimson Princess Hoya. And I was really disappointed with it. It had a couple leaves that were tricolor leaves, but most of them are green. And then it also had two other plants in the pot. This was another plant that was in the pot with this Crimson Princess. And as you can see, it's completely green. And I spent like a good $30 on this plant. It wasn't quite the tricolor I was hoping for. So what I did was I took a cutting and I propagated that and from that propagation grew this plant. Since it started growing, it has only put out variegated growth and it's beautiful. That taught me that there is a chance that when you take a cutting from a reverted pr Crimson Princess, possibly it will revert back if you're lucky. This is now one of my favorite plants, my Hoya Kerii. This was a single leaf when I got it. So Wellington Botanical Garden had an open day and they also had a plant sale. And my friend who lives in Wellington knew that I wanted a Kerii and she managed to grab one. And Rach, you're amazing. It was a single leaf and over the summer, it's just gone crazy. This is one of my newer Hoyas. This is my Hoya Nicholasonia. I repotted it once I had it and I really attacked its root ball. You may have seen that video that I made of that. I really attacked that root ball because it looked like it had mealy bug. And because I attacked that root ball trying to get rid of all signs of mealy, it suffered some root damage. So I've got, I had some leaves like this. I had some leaves drop off but I know that it's going to be a healthier plant in the long run. This is a Hoya pubicalix. I'm not sure what variety it is and I won't know until it flowers, which is good because I've got two peduncles here. I'm just waiting for next summer 
um, and then it will flower for me and I will know exactly what kind of pubercalyx you are. I think it's possibly pink silver. If you guys watched my plant haul video recently, you would have seen me get this plant. It's a Hoya longifolia and it's being treated at the moment for mealybug. It's got some new growth on it actually. Ooh, that's exciting. I haven't seen any more mealybug, so I'm actually pretty happy with how this one is going. The next plants I want to talk about are my Crimson Queen Hoya. The Crimson Queen Hoya is different from the Crimson Princess. So the Crimson Princess has the variegation on the inside of the leaf and the Crimson Queen has the variegation on the outside of the leaf. And an easy way to remember this is that the Crimson Queen wears her variegation like a crown the Crimson Princess wears her variegation like a gown. I love you. I love them both, and I can't actually choose which one's my favorite between the two. Because when the Crimson Queen, the Crimson Queen sometimes gets these white leaves, pure white leaves, and when they first grow, and you've got a lot of sun hitting them, they go like bright pink. It's amazing that a plant can do that. This is my wee baby one. My friend Taylor gave me this. I had to nip out the new growth for this a while ago because it kept producing only white leaves. That was getting dangerous because the white leaves are basically parasitic. They don't give any sustenance to the plant. They don't photosynthesize because photosynthesis only happens in the green areas of plants. So the white leaves, although beautiful, are useless and it started dropping its leaves and that's how I knew that it was getting to a point where it couldn't sustain the white leaves so I nipped out the new growth you need to grow some green growth please they grow these tendrils out and then they put out leaves later on you can see where the leaves are coming in it's really really hunting for something to grow on so what I need to do is put a wire hoop in here so that this can oh just hit myself in the face so that it can wind around and grow up that wire hoop. See how pink that stem is? So most of the growth I imagine from this stem is most likely going to be white leaves. Now if you go over here to this stem, you see that's not very pink at all. And so the leaves are coming out mostly green. Recently I visited a plant friend and she actually gave me this fishtail hoya or hoya, hoya polyneura. It's so beautiful. And I love how it's in this terracotta pot that's like super rustic. This plant likes to be watered slightly more, just like the Bella, Hoya Bella. And it prefers colder climates. So yeah, it should do well during the winter, I think. It's got a stem that sticks up. And then all the growth is coming off the stem, so it almost looks like a little bonsai plant. So cute. So as you guys know, I have two Hoya Compactor. This is one of them, and this is the other. So you can see that this is like an apple green. It's quite a different color to this one. It might have been in a glass house, so it got a lot, a lot of sun. It's new growth on my first Hoya Compactor is came in like a almost a burgundy red and has settled down now to a chocolate brown it's so beautiful so you can tell where the new growth is because it's a radically different color i'm interested to see how the new growth on this one goes i think it's very interesting that this is such a different color to my other compactor i have it hanging in my laundry at the moment giving it the same or similar conditions to my other compactor is it gonna calm down in color? Is it gonna stop being this strange lime green? Not that I really mind, I, but I'm not a huge fan of lime green. I just think it's interesting. Its roots are healthy. It's, it's growing, some new growth. So it's a healthy plant. It's just, it's just like an apple green. It's so bizarre. I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know if you want to see any of my other collections put together. I will go put all these back in the various nooks and crannies they live in.
want to talk about. What are you doing, Biggie? You're just looking at your plants. What the fuck?